would investigate flexoelectricity. Flexoelectricity is new phenomena. Uh, maybe not everybody heard about flexoelectricity. And in my talk, I will try to explain it. So, structural health monitoring uh, it is needed to use uh, uh, some uh, monitoring of structures to prevent uh, collapse uh, and uh, for high performance structure. This collapse can lead to disaster before it's needed uh, monitoring of structure in the real time. For this purpose, that I utilize a uh, convenient material in which it is ability of transform one kind of energy to the other one in piezoelectric materials it is in sense of it is transformation of a mechanical energy to electrical. In this expression you can see the proportionality uh, for the polarization vector and the strength and coefficient of proportionality E I J K is tensor of the third order. It is piezoelectric coefficient. We would like to have the very high value of this coefficient. Unfortunately, in nature, uh, this coefficient is not very high, and therefore it is some effort to uh, to combination different material to enhance this coefficient and. Uh, researchers are partially successful to enhance about 20, 20 or 30 percent. Uh, in nature, this uh, uh, phenomena is observed only in a uh, narrow class of materials uh, with non-symmetric arrangement of atoms. And from the properties, uh, transformation properties, uh, this uh, Non-vanishing value is also only in material where all all terms are not vanish. Uh, and much higher class of material has symmetric arrangement of atoms. Therefore, it is needed to find new kind of uh, materials uh, where it is observed the flexoelectricity. Flexoelectricity is phenomena similar to piezoelectricity where a polarization vector is proportional to the strength gradients. And you can see that the flexoelectricity coefficient is a tensor of the fourth order. And uh, this uh, non dimensional value is observed also in the material where it is symmetric arrangement of atom ions. Then we talk about the direct uh, flexoelectricity. In this figure you can see in undeformed state of being, uh, symmetric arrangement of ions, then in such a case it is not observed uh, piezoelectricity, it's symmetric, it is not piezoelectricity, and in, in the form state it is no deformation, then uh, flexoelectricity is also zero. In the form state you can see that the, uh, the symmetry is broken, and you can see the shift of, of these ions, and experimentally it was observed on this graphene a sheet with a uh, hole to get a non-uniform distribution of the strain and strain gradients, and really it was observed in this figure, you can see the dependence of polarization vector on the strain gradient. And this uh, phenomena is called as flexoelectricity. This is a very uh, uh, nice uh, discovery since uh, this uh, phenomena can be utilized to, for new design of the sensors since uh, uh, this uh, uh, since uh, polarization of vector is much higher, 100 times higher than in classical piezoelectricity and also the size of, of this sensor is relatively smaller than in classical sensor base of piezoelectricity before we can measure uh, new quantities like strength gradients which are very important for the 
monitoring of, of uh, fatwork. And I said that uh, this phenomena is observed in, in material uh, with its high strain gradients. High strain gradients is accurate in uh, uh, structures uh, with small size, we can say in nano size structures. However, uh, we cannot apply the classical continuum mechanics for modeling of uh, nano size structure since it is missing here. Uh, the side dependent phenomena uh, in constitutive equations, and uh, we need to apply molecular dynamics or some advanced model like something like that, mainly in theory of uh, the ingredients. Uh, okay, uh, in general, we can write constitutive equation. Uh, in this form, then the Cauchy stress tensor is proportional to the uh, uh, elastic coefficient and strength. In piezoelectric materials, it, it is term which contains an uh, electrical intensity vector. And uh, I said about the uh, uh, direct flex of electricity. However, like in uh, piezoelectricity, we have the uh, direct and inversion. Flex electricity, although yeah, we have the direct and converse flex electricity, this term is proportional to the gradient of the electric intensity vector. Then, in gradient theory of elasticity, we have also uh, high order stress tensor, and here yeah, we have the uh, direct flex electricity coefficient, and this term represents a size effect, uh, which is uh, this term G. It is tensor of the sixth order, and uh, in simplified mean theory, it is proportional to the internal material lens, uh, which represents uh, the structure of materials. And this eta, eta here, is a strength gradient. Since it is coupling of the mechanical and electrical field, we have also here uh, electrical displacement. This is uh, the electric coefficient. Defined. And in the corner electricity, we need to add all those that quadrupolar. Uh, it is high order electrical displacement. Okay. Now, I selected some papers where we have a uh, recent publication. Uh, we have analyzed the flex electricity. In a static case, uh, it's enough to consider all the uh, internal uh, uh, material characteristic lens and all the uh, flex electricity coefficient. However, in dynamic dynamic theory, it needed to also modify the dynamic development forces, and this term represents uh, it is Laplacian of the acceleration uh, uh, character. It's called as a micro inertia effect. Okay, more more detail you can find. In layer, layer restructures are accurate mainly in microelectronics. And uh, in literature, you can find investigation of interface track problem analyzed by classical uh, continuum mechanics. And the, this uh, contribution is the first analysis of interface track uh, analyzed by gradient theory of elasticity uh, and we have analyzed the dielectric material in such a case Cauchy stress tensor does not contain piezoelectric uh, coefficient then uh, this constitutive equation are a little bit simpler than the uh, constitutive equation for general tennis on previous slides. Now uh, this coefficient uh, here, as I said, it is high order elastic coefficient. In, uh, in original, uh, middle theory contains 18 terms. And therefore, this theory, it was not uh, possible to apply it for solution of real problems. Two minutes. Oh, sorry. Oh. 
then uh, we consider it only on, on, only one characteristic left, and something similar is valid for the flexolytic theorem. Okay. And governing equation in, in this case are uh, given here, uh, and uh, this uh, constitutive uh, this governing equation can be replaced by the effective trefis, where sigma hard uh, is uh, given here as the substrate. Uh, in uh, this gradient theory, traction vector is a little bit more complicated. In classical theory, it's a scalar product, normal vector, and, and uh, Cauchy stress. Okay, some additional quantities are accurate in gradient theory. And, uh, okay, I okay, we, we uh, derive uh, uh, the finite uh, element equation and uh, mix of uh, finite element method where we use C0 approximation for independent for the uh, displacement and uh, also for the strength and we obtain uh, the uh, set of governing uh, finite element equation. Now we analyze uh, this uh, interface problem under the uh, uniform law, and here you can see the variation of crack opening displacement for various material ratio, and this is for the small value of, uh, of uh, flexibility coefficient, for the larger one is here, and in this figure is a uh, variation of the potential, induced potential, for the uh, various values of the flexoelectric coefficient, and you can see the strong dependence of uh, induced potential on the flexoelectric coefficient. Okay. And here it's the variation of the Cauchy stresses that uh, has a crack, crack tip, and you can see its finite value of the stresses as the crack tip. It is opposite to the classical theory, and in for the effective total stresses, it is singularity half power uh, minus one and half. Uh, and you can see here the variation of effective stresses. Okay. And here you can see the very uh, uh, effective stress tensor uh, variation on the electrolytic coefficient. And you can see that it is a reduction of effective stresses for the high value, larger value of the flexible Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, the paper is open for discussion. Yes, please.